What's up, YouTube? This is Ribo at the Bench, and today I have another head-to-head -head video. Today, uh, pairing the CRKT, or Cricket as I call it, and it makes people mad because apparently that's a thing. Uh, I'll say it again, the Cricket M1601S. This is the small version of the M16. And then you have the K-Bar Dozier, uh, classic, uh, classic, probably most popular design from K-Bar. Uh, both of these priced about $20 to $25. They are both roughly equal in steel. 8CR13 8CR 13 MOV versus OS8. You have all metal construction versus a uh, FRN Zytel handle here. Uh, you have a uh, frame lock here versus a back lock. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have two knives that are roughly equal in size and in price and in steel. And uh, so I thought it might be fun to pit them against each other and see which one comes out on top. Both of these knives are roughly seven and a quarter inches. Uh, I believe the Dozier is slightly larger, but both right around that size. Let me bring in the uh, scale to do a quick weight check. Obviously the all metal construction of the M16 is gonna be a little bit heavier. So 2.9 ounces. And on the Dozier, we have 2.3. So you're looking at about a half an ounce. All right, so that gives us basic, uh, basic height, weight, uh, just kind of a, a quick rundown of each. As always, here are the categories. So read these really quick. Pocket clip scales, overall size, considering height, weight, how does it carry, etc. Ergonomics, action detent, blade, blade, you know, geometry, which one's a better slicer, etc. Steel lock system, obviously two different locks, and the intangibles, just kind of which one am I reaching for when I want a knife. All right, so uh, first up we have pocket clip. So both of these uh, have a really unspectacular pocket clip, so not a ton you know, to look at. You have a little bit deeper carry on the, uh, the Cricut than you do on the uh, K-Bar Dozier. And besides that, they look very uh, similar, however, on the Dozier, which try to do, try, tries to do the same thing as the Delica, you have this ramp coming down onto the, uh, the, the logo right here. Uh, however, they overshoot that, and so you're actually pushing up against the texture when it goes in your pocket, which defeats the whole purpose. So this one has been not as enjoyable to get in and out of the pocket. This guy has a little bit higher lip on it, it's a little bit thinner, and it's a deeper carry, so I'm gonna give the win to, uh, to the M16 on that one. Scales, so you have all metal construction here. Whoops. And you have these kind of, you know, they've drilled out all of these places, presumably to make it a lighter knife. Uh, but there really is no texturing on this. It's all metal, so it's gonna be heavier. Uh, whereas here on the Zytel, um, really plastic scales, you have a good bit of texturing all across and you have an overall weight reduction of almost a half an ounce uh, for what's actually a bigger blade. And we'll talk about that in a second. So I think to me, easy win is uh, to the, the Dozier. All right, overall size. So like I said, these, these measure roughly the same length. And let's see real quick if we can get a measurement on the, let's do it in millimeters, on the thickness without the clip. So it looks like 10.6. And on this one, looking at 8.9. So a little bit thicker here, uh, a little bit thinner here. And overall, you know, a, a, a larger blade on the Dozier versus the blade on the M16. So same length, a little bit thinner, a little bit slimmer in the pocket here. Uh, but really the, the difference in size comes in at the blades. So if you look at these two blades side by side, you can see a significant difference in the K-Bar. So you have a, a wider belly there, a real nice, uh, not quite flat grind, kind of a, a shallow hollow grind there, uh, but a, a pr pretty large blade uh, compared to the uh, M16 on your left. Uh, and so, you know, for that reason, yes, this is a little bit slimmer in the pocket, uh, just, you know, just by a little bit. Uh, and so it will carry a little bit smaller, uh, but for that, you're getting a much lighter blade here, much lighter knife here. And so overall, I would prefer to have a lighter knife with a larger blade than a smaller knife uh, that's much heavier. Uh, and so I'm gonna give the advantage there to the Dozier as well. Ergonomics. 
So ergonomics on here at first glance may appear that they would be much nicer on the M16. However, the handle here really can comfortably fit three fingers. If I get four on here, I'm actually wrapping right over uh, that curve at the end there. And so, you know, it, it makes it uncomfortable because uh, my handle here, sorry, I got some uh, sawdust on me. So the handle here is just, you know, not super comfortable. It does contour nicely, uh, but it's made for somebody with a, a lot smaller uh, fingers than I have. On this one, you have a, a kind of a slow sweeping curve here uh, and just a larger uh, handle. So it, it just makes it a little bit more enjoyable or actually a lot more enjoyable because I can kind of back off the knife a little bit or I can come up. Either way, nothing's biting into my hand there. And so, uh, you know, shortcuts, long cuts, you know, either one, this one has been far more comfortable. So I'll give the advantage to the Dozier as well. Action detent. So uh, this is a frame lock and this is a liner lock. And so really just looking, I'm sorry, did I say liner lock? This is a, a back lock, my goodness. Uh, so really this is just looking at how enjoyable or easy is it to de deploy the knife in whatever type of lock uh, that it has. Uh, so on the back lock, uh, it looks like there are two ways really to deploy the knife. One is to just grab all of the exposed blade, which there's a, a decent bit of that blade exposed, and pull it open. That's super easy. That's actually what I find myself doing quite a bit. But it also has this thumb stud here, which is a single thumb stud. I'm pretty sure you can reverse that, uh, but it does not come out both sides. And you have a, a decent bit of texturing on that thumb stud right there. Unfortunately, because of the placement of the thumb stud, uh, where your hand has to be to push it open, by the time you get to about right there, the thumb is extended and you can't really push open anymore. And so you have to kind of move your hand up and finish deploying the knife, which is not a great thing. And it's something that's just a design flaw with the knife. Uh, you also have zero chance to flick this knife open. That's just not gonna happen. Uh, on the CRKT, you have a thumb stud here, which I don't know what it's for, but it's definitely not deploying the knife. I've never been able to even get the knife out a little bit. Uh, but you have this flipper and the flipper is fine it's not you know anything special the knife is on i believe one plastic washer and one brass washer uh, there are plenty of times when i go to flick the knife open and it doesn't deploy all the way but for one-handed opening you can do it with this one whereas this one you technically can if you kind of do this and then you move up and do but not all that great so i'm gonna say that this is the advantage with action detent all right, the blade. So two very different blades. You have a spear point here, uh, and then you have this nice broad, uh, broad blade here. Uh, to me, this one's easy. This one is the better slicer. It cuts things uh, much better. It doesn't come down to a super fine point, which I always really like, even for opening packages and stuff like that. It's just a much broader blade. You have that really nice grind right there. Uh, it's been able to cut cardboard, open packages, all that kind of thing really well. This one to me is just, it's made more for the eye and not for the hand. You know, it, it looks cool and looks, you know, kind of stabby, I guess, I don't know. Uh, but to me, it's just not a super useful blade design, you know, for everyday carry. Uh, so, so I'll give the advantage there to the Dozier. Steel, okay, so this one usually is a very objective category. Right now, this one is a very subjective category because both of these are fairly equal in steel. You have AUS8 and you have 8CR13MOV. Now, in my opinion, I like AUS8 a lot better than 8CR13MOV. That's probably all in my head. My Ontario rat is in AUS8. I've always liked it. It's not great, but you know, it, it you know, it's it's a I would say it's a, a new knife person steel. You can you can get into knives and sharpening by AUS8 because it's very soft. Uh, you'll have to sharpen it a lot more, but I have not had any issues with chipping. Uh, whereas I have had issues with chipping on uh, HCR13 and MOV knives. I don't think this has had any issues with that. Uh, but to me, I just I give a slight advantage to the AUS8. I've also read that that some of that is correct. That AUS8 might be you may have to sharpen it a little bit more, but it's just going to roll. It's not actually going to chip. Uh, but they're roughly equal. I'm going to give the advantage just based on my experience to the AUS8. All right, lock system. Uh, so frame lock and back lock. Um, I have mentioned before that I am not the biggest fan of frame locks. I think that done rightly, they are fine and they are very strong. However, 
I've not had great experience. I've had a budget uh, Gerber whose frame lock decided to just stop working. Uh, just over time, it just didn't engage anymore. You can see this one is about at 50%, maybe a little bit more. Uh, there's no bar that's going to prevent you from overextending the frame here. I have seen that happen on other knives, and so you could ruin this knife uh, by just overextending that frame to disengage the lock. This one is just tried and true. A back lock is super duper strong. You have these two big chunks of metal. This one's catching the other one as it comes through. You have a very satisfying engage there, and to me, it practically turns this into a fixed blade. I mean, this is solid. There's no play. Uh, know anything. And so I, I believe that even objectively, the back lock is a better lock than this one. And I think considering that this is a budget frame lock, and I've personally had knives uh, whose, whose frame locks stopped working over time, uh, I think this one is definitely the clear winner in terms of lock system. All right, so not that we need it, but in the intangibles category. I mean, it's not going to come as a huge surprise. This one is my go-to knife. This one I'm gonna be selling. Uh, this is not a, a carry knife for me per se, but uh, it, it is going to get some time you know, in a tool chest, in a, a work bag, in, a, in the car, or something like that. It's a great knife. It's, it's just a, it's made to cut. That, that's what it's made for. It's very simple, but it's made to cut. It's comfortable in the hand. It's easy to use. There's just not much to it. It's, it's, it's very simplistic. This one is made to look cool, in my opinion. It's, it's not actually made to cut. It's not actually made to carry. Uh, it's, it's heavier than it needs to be. It has a smaller blade. The blade shape is not uh, as, as helpful as it should be to me. Uh, and then just overall, it's not an enjoyable knife. So in my opinion, uh, the clear winner of this battle is the K-Bar Dozier. For 20 bucks, you cannot go wrong. And if I were uh, pitting these against each other, I had $20 to spend every time I would go with the Dozier. So hope you've enjoyed this video. See you next time.